Welcome to this video for solving the loop calculation using Kirchhoff's laws. Now, before we look at an exam type question, I first want to go over the fundamental principles of Kirchhoff's laws. If we look at the circuit, you'll see that there are three batteries. We have a positive terminal and a negative terminal. Now, the third battery, the terminals are switched around. We have negative at the top and positive at the bottom. Now, for the EMF, for the first battery, you will see that it's in the same direction as the conventional current flow, which is from positive to negative. Now, when we go about our loops in this circuit, we move in a clockwise direction. Because the EMF is in the same direction as clockwise, it will be positive. For the second battery, once again, the direction of the EMF is in the same direction as the conventional current flow. And when we look at the clockwise direction for the loop, you will see that it is opposing the clockwise direction. So therefore, the EMF is negative when opposing clockwise. For the third battery, the terminals are switched around. So therefore, the direction of the EMF is in the same direction as conventional current flow from positive to negative. And this is in the same direction as the clockwise direction. So therefore, the EMF will also be positive. Now, current is also positive when facing in a clockwise direction. And current is also negative when opposing the clockwise direction. Now, we use Ohm's law as an example. Okay, for, for memory, current is directly proportional to voltage, inversely proportional to resistance. So therefore, the potential difference is going to be current multiplied by resistance. Now, you'll see that the volt drop across the first resistor here will be I1 multiplied by R1. And it's in the same direction as the clockwise direction. And we are looking at loop A, B, E, F, and A. Now, if we take a look at the next loop, which is A, C, D, F, and A, you'll notice that we have I1 times R1. That's in a clockwise direction. And we have I1 minus I2, which is also in a clockwise direction. So that's going to be positive. And then we multiply by R3, which gives us the potential difference across the load. Now, our final loop will be B, C, D, E, and B. Now, here you'll notice that I2 is opposing the direction of clockwise. So therefore, it will be negative. And to calculate the potential difference using Ohm's law, it is I2 times R2. Now, I3, which, is, which equates to I1 minus I2, it's in the same direction as the clockwise direction. So therefore, it's going to be positive. Okay, now we can move to our example. Two batteries of EMF of 50 volts and 60 volts with internal resistances of 0.4 ohms and 0.5 ohms, respectively. They are connected in parallel to a load of 25 ohms. Use Kirchhoff's law to calculate the following. In part A, the value and direction of the current through the 60 volt and 50 volt battery. And then finally, the volt drop across the load. So I've gone ahead and drawn the circuit for us. Okay, we have two batteries, one of 50 volts with an internal resistance of 0,4 ohms, 60 volts with an internal resistance of 0,5 ohms. And then our load has a value of 25 ohms. Now you'll notice that I1 is flowing in a positive direction. I2 is also in a clockwise direction, so that will be positive. And then we have I1 minus I2. Right, let's go ahead and look at the different equations for the circuit. Okay, you'll see there, clockwise and clockwise. Right, for loop A, B, E, F, A, we're going to have the EMF1 minus the second EMF because it is opposing the clockwise direction. And that is equal to I1 times R1 plus I2 times R2. So let's substitute the values there. The first EMF is 50 volts minus the second EMF of 60 volts. And then the internal resistance of 0,4 multiplied by I1. And the internal resistance of 0,5 multiplied by I2. So if we simplify this equation, we have equation 1 is equal to negative 10, which is 0,4 multiplied by I1 plus 0,5 times I2. Let's go ahead and look at the second loop. 
Now if we look B, C, D, E, B, C, D, E, we have I2 and multiply by R2. And this is going to be in a negative direction because it is opposing the clockwise direction. And then we have the final volt drop across the load, which is I1 minus I2 multiplied by R3. Okay, let's substitute those values. The second battery, the EMF is 60. Then we have the internal resistance for R2 of 0.5. And then we have the resistance of the load, which is 25 ohms. Now, if we multiply this out, we'll end up with a positive I1 and a negative I2. Okay, so it's 60. We have minus 0.5 R2 plus 25 R1 minus 25 R2. Now, you'll notice where the signs are the same. We can add them together and they will remain a negative sign. So if we take it one step further, we'll end up with equation 2 where we have 60 is equal to 25 R1 minus 25, 5 I2. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to simplify by finding a common factor. So I'm going to multiply equation 1 by 62, 5 so that we can simplify these two equations. So in our first step, we have minus 625 is equal to 25 I1 plus 31, 2, 5 I2. This means we can simplify this equation by cancelling out I1. Okay, let's substitute equation 2 there, and we will subtract equation 2 from equation 1. So 625 minus 60, well the signs are the same, so we'll add them together, and we end up with a negative sign. 25 will cancel 25, and 31 minus negative 25,5 will give us 56,7 R2. A little bit of uh, calculation over here. It means that I2 is equal to minus 12,07 amps. Now, the negative sign represents the direction of the current flow. Now, to simplify this so we can find I1, we will substitute I2 into the first equation. So the first equation was minus 10, 0,4 I1 plus 0,5 I2. So we'll substitute I2 in there. It is minus 12,07. And uh, I've, just to save a bit of time, I've used my calculator here, and we get an answer of minus 9,913 amps for I1. Right, the final part of the question said to calculate the volt drop across the load. And here we have I1 minus I2 multiplied by the value of the load, which is 25 ohms. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute I1 and I2 multiplied by the resistance of the load to give us the volt drop. Okay, I1 was minus 9,913. I2 was minus 12,07 multiplied by the load. Subtract inside the brackets. And we end up with a volt drop of 53,925 volts. Thanks for watching this video for solving the loop equation using Kirchhoff's law.